can see it's a privilege. Oh, really? You can see it's a privilege, boy, can't you? Oh, oh yes. really? Very much. He, he was expelled from school, you know that. Um, we spoke about Liverpool briefly. I want to tuck down the other end of the table, Simon. Uh, at one stage, you had next to no time for Chris Wilder. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Basically, you, basically. Is he growing on you a bit with what you're seeing here? I mean, since he went back to Sheffield United... He's done more than all right, I think, uh, in terms of expectation. All right, just one win, two yeah. draws, four losses. But Sheffield United, points are very, very hard to come by. There was a lot in the end of that match at Bramall Lane between Sheffield United and West Ham. We'll get to that. But Wilder's making a difference, and he himself is up for it. Uh, employee, manager, supporter. Over the years, we've, we've seen a lot of things, and yet again, we've... Uh, Seen uh, an ent- entertaining afternoon, a beautiful downtown Bramall Lane. So, uh, listen, I, for, for me, it was the least we deserved, uh, in my opinion, from a statistical point of view, if I can spit it out right. Um, the, the stats point to a positive performance from, from my team and, um, and from my eyes. Um, and delighted to get something from the game because you know with uh, with, with five or ten minutes to go for, for the world, it didn't look as if uh, we were going to get a, a deserved result from the game. Simon, it looked like they, they weren't going to get anything from that match. They snatched a draw against West Ham with the latest ever Premier League goal in the 103rd minute. Um, McBurney's penalty. Then West Ham did That tells get... you something in its own right, doesn't it? That they keep going to the end. Well, they go to the end, but Jared Bowen went down inside the box at the other end and West Ham might have been given a penalty. Weren't. We'll get to that shortly. But what are you, are you seeing anything different under under uh, Chris Wilder at, at Sheffield? Um yeah, I mean, obviously we saw them perform better against Aston Villa when he came in early doors. We've, I mean, we're seeing yeah. more. He's got them going. You know, yeah. they still got beat by Luton, didn't they? Um, you know, and that comes at Sheffield United, and you wouldn't want that as a re- on your resume when there's one of the sides you're going to go against. But he has done what I expected him to do. He's given them, a, he's concentrated their minds, got them at it a little bit more. Um, for whatever reason, and for whatever reason, Heckin Bottom, they stopped listening to him, and they're now listening to Chris Wilder. But I would expect that. That doesn't mean that if you've got, what, four points out of seven games, it's going to alter the landscape. If you're, if you're going to go down, if, you're going down to, if, you, if the argument is we're going to go down to the, uh, to the championship with nobility, well, what, what does that mean then? Great, fantastic. You give your home fans a little bit more to hang on to. The object of the aim is to try and stay up. It's very difficult for him because their best players were sold before he got there in terms of Sanderberg was sold to the rivals, you know, Burnley, a team that they're going to be competing with. But he did expect exactly what I expected him to. He's a decent manager. Yeah. Just because I don't like some of his behaviour doesn't mean I've got a, you know, a picture of him on my wall throwing darts at every day. The, but the thing is, when you look at it at the moment, Sheffield United are right at the bottom on 10 points and no team we know has ever survived with fewer points in the Premier League at this stage of the season. Burnley just above them, Luton just above them. But then you've got Everton and Forest and of course, that picture could change dramatically yeah, could be an intervention, if what yeah. we are told is coming Everton's way come Everton's way yeah. and what we're told might come Forest's way comes Forest's way maybe maybe I mean if that's if, that, if that's a pat on the back I mean I suppose if you put yourself in range and you give yourself an opportunity and fate intervenes and, and enables you to get out from underneath on the back of other people being sanctioned then I guess in the record books that's, that's what it'll look like but no doubt he's made them more difficult he's made them the Sheffield United that came up when he brought them up in the first season that were difficult to play against competitive yeah they lack quality and they still lack quality but notwithstanding that they're, they, they're, they're put a shift in and that's what the least you can expect from a, from sure a, from a team that's in the Premier League Graham at the other end West Ham are sixth they, they got a point at Bramall Lane but they would argue had we been given that penalty at the end after the equaliser right at the death for Sheffield Wednesday had the, the Bowen incident resulted in a penalty West Ham might have left with all three points and this comes hard in the heels of David Moyes saying we're out the FA Cup but why was there no VAR so Moyes it seems when he's speaking post-match has one grumble after another and this was him You should ask the referee and see what they think and ask the other people you know we're, we've got to a stage now where we're sort of set went for a, a level of officiating which we're all sort of shrugging our shoulders and saying yeah okay and the late decision where, you, again, you thought you should have had a penalty later on? Yeah, well, that's, you know, we're, we're actually, as I said, shrugging my shoulders again and seeing what they do. We don't know what they're going to do. I mean, David there making the noise of a, of a manager uh, who, who obviously is frustrated. Um, but how do you, you know, at the end of the day, Graham, that can only go, lo- go, go so far. I mean, it's down to them, isn't it? Sheffield and I get back into it. 
West Ham couldn't see it out at 2-1. West Ham went out the cup to Bristol City. There was no VAR mm. on that day. you got to, you got to take it as it is, have you not? Yeah, and they're sitting sixth in the league. And they're sitting sixth in the sixth league. league. You know, which is a priority for West Ham, I would imagine. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a great believer. You know, you hear, you hear that saying all the time, well, over a season, your luck will even itself out. I don't believe that. I think it's over your career. Luck will even itself out. Managers, every week now, there's one manager, one manager or two managers that are extremely unhappy with the VAR calls or just poor refereeing. And it's, um, you know, we've, we're getting back to the, the VAR conversation that was brought in to make life easier for referees where it's just embarrassed them. It's just shown them up for but not he being was, he, he's, very the, good. The, his, his argument last week was there was no VAR yeah. in the cup. So yeah. quite, I mean, it's, but, unlike David, yeah. this because I'm surprised by it, and it, there's a lot of background noise. It would appear, and when certain sections of the West Ham fan base are just not having him, and we sit in the studio going, well, "We're trying to work that backwards," and they say it's the dire football. You're sixth in the league since he's got you. Since he's gone gone there, he's taken you away from the nosedive that Pellegrini put you into. He's put you into Europe. He's won a competition for you. But then they look at quarterfinals of the League Cup where he puts out a second string team at Anfield and gets smashed. They then look at the FA Cup and go, we're getting knocked out by a championship side after two legs. Mm. One against, one at home when we've got VAR and one against when we haven't. David talks, about, complains about VAR decisions and then complains about oh. not having VAR in the second, uh, in the replay. So it feels like, I don't know, David's being a bit reactive because I don't, I don't remember him being like this. Part of the argument, I can understand the fans' argument. He's prioritising the, the Premier League is, a, is the most important thing for him. I can remember like Sam taking a team, so I think it was Nottingham Forest in the FA Cup and not feeling a, a team and them, them getting well well beaten. Mm. Um, and then there was criticism there. Ah, he's working with a group of players and he's the manager and he is looking at them on a daily basis and thinking he could do it every week. Bowen comes to mind, instantly comes to mind. Um Little other little midfield player they got from from Southampton comes to mind. These are guys that, you know could play every other day. Yeah, and there's others that can't maintain that level. So he's making choices on what his eyes are telling him and what his med medical staff are are telling him, and it's up to him to come up with the right answers. I'm afraid sure. you know lo losing in the League Cup, you know feeling a team was it Liverpool who went and got squashed at Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. You know is that a game they're going to win with the strongest team as he thought. I came. I come back to it. We discussed it two weeks ago. The priority for for teams like West Ham has to be the Premier, Premier League. League. You don't Absolutely. have a squad to take a, take um yeah every game on head on as you'd want to. So, you know, we come back to the replay aspect. You know, ask David Moyes if he wants replays in League Cup for sure. Uh, News from ten on AM on DAB via the Talksport app and on your smart speaker. Talksport.